Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. A few weeks ago we went over the episode Squeeze from the X-Files, and I mentioned that I would go over the follow-up episode, Tombs, in a future video. If you haven't guessed already, the episode is Season 1, Episode 3, Squeeze, but we will also go into the follow-up episode in a future video. Well, this is that video. In the previous episode, Squeeze, Agents Mulder and Scully were trying to catch a killer, who seemed to be able to get to his victims, despite no clear way of entry, and had removed each of his victims' livers with his bare hands. Mulder had pointed out the similarity between these murders and murders that had taken place in 1903, 1933, and 1963, although of course, the other agents didn't take him seriously as usual. The offender turned out to be a man named Eugene Victor Toombs, a genetic mutant who had the ability to stretch himself out in order to sneak through his victim's ventilation systems and chimneys. However, he suffered from a rapidly declining metabolism, and so stole his victim's livers in order to combat this. The episode begins where we left off, in the institution where Toombs was placed. He stretches his arm through the food slot, in order to unlock the door of his cell, but his psychologist, Dr. Monty, arrives, so he has to abandon his plan. Dr. Monty lets him know that he has a review coming up, where he might be released back into the general population before it cuts to the opening credits. I didn't really touch on this in my last video on the X-Files, but I love how goofy and 90s these opening credits are with the random science-y footage and graphics. It always makes me laugh. Scully is called to a meeting by the FBI assistant director, Walter Skinner, Skinner, who tells her that despite her and Mulder's success with the X-Files, he would rather they pursue more orthodox cases, despite Scully's protests. On X-Files cases investigated by Agent Mulder and myself to date, we have a conviction or case solution of 75% that's well above the current Bureau standard. And that is your only saving grace. He is joined by the Smoking Man, who is actually one of the primary antagonists of the series. At Toombs' hearing, various figures give statements that contradict Mulder and Scully's original findings, making Toombs seem innocent. It is argued that his assault of Scully was provoked by him losing his job on account of being accused of murder, and was, quote, His assault on Agent Scully was, quote, frustration directed at the wrong person. I know this may work in the context of some cases, but surely if he assaulted someone, regardless of whether he was falsely accused or not, seriously injuring someone without self-defense, especially if it's the wrong person, does indicate some psychological instability, does it not? We are given this freaky shot of Toombs looking at his doctor in the way a lion looks at a gazelle before it's about to strike, ironically as Monty is testifying in his favor. Mulder then testifies against Toombs, but one of the panel members shuts him down immediately. I know where he's going with this. May I remind the court that Mr. Toombs was placed in psychiatric care solely for the previous assault on Agent Scully. He has never been charged, nor has any evidence linked him to any other crime. Of course, Spooky Mulder goes into his theory of Toombs' criminal history, and to the rest of the courtroom minus Scully it sounds ridiculous. Toombs is released, shall return to his job as a pest control worker, and is placed under the care of an older couple. Convinced he will kill again as soon as possible, Mulder swears to keep a watchful eye on Toombs' every move. Think of him as an animal. they will only kill out of necessity or self-defense. If he makes an attempt, I'll be there to stop him. While at work, Toombs notes a woman as his next victim, but Mulder puts a stop to that. Scully meets with Briggs, who I mistakenly referred to as Biggs in my Squeeze video, and he tells her that the victim's body whose liver he showed to Mulder and Scully was never found, and they visit the chemical plant where the piece of liver was discovered. They find a skeleton encased in concrete and have it excavated. Toombs has his eyes set on another new victim and tries to break into his house at night after stalking him, but Mulder has done his own bit of stalking and scares Toombs off, preventing him from acquiring his next meal. This scene has quite good tension in it, 
Toombs disgustingly entering the house through the plumbing and biding his time so as to not get caught. Forensics identifies the skeleton as the missing victim from 1933 and also notes there appears to be gnawing around the ribs. However, this is not enough evidence to tie Toombs to the murder. Scully shows concern for Mulder's recent work ethic while watching Toombs' house in terms of both his health and efficiency. This isn't about doing it by the book. This is about you not having slept for three days. Mulder, you're going to get sloppy and you're going to get hurt. It's inevitable at this point. We get a cute Mulder X Scully moment. Mulder, I wouldn't put myself on the line for anybody but you. And she relieves him of duty for now, but doesn't realize that Toombs is hiding in the boot of the car. Mulder falls asleep while watching The Fly, the one from the 50s, not the Cronenberg version, and Toombs breaks into his house. Toombs injures himself and frames Mulder by imprinting Mulder's boot onto his face. The police question Mulder the following morning, much to his confusion, and while Mulder is not charged, he is forbidden to contact Toombs again. Scully brings Mulder to forensics to discuss the skeleton she and Briggs found. Further analysis has shown gnawing on the ribcage as human teeth marks, and a computer-generated model of Toombs' jaws show that they match. At his new residence, Toombs is visited by Monty while building a new nest, which he says is for paper mache. Toombs closes his bedroom door and attacks Monty off screen. This means that Toombs has eaten the five livers he needs to go back to hibernating, and Mulder and Scully head to where his old apartment used to be now that it has been torn down. While heading to Toombs' nest to find him, Toombs climbs out and attacks Mulder, covered in bile. With Scully's help, Mulder scrambles to the surface and activates the escalator, crushing Toombs. I think this episode was quite good as a follow-up on Squeeze, especially as Squeeze had such an impact on the success of The X-Files. It doesn't beat around the bush, and starts off right when the original episode had ended. Toombs was presented as evil and relatively inescapable to his victims in his first appearance, but this really characterises him as calculating and malicious due to his attempted framing of Mulder, compared to it being him acting on instinct, as Mulder put it, like an animal. I thought the ending of Toombs was quite satisfying in terms of writing, as it wasn't just a simple, whoops, he's going back to prison, as we'd already seen him have multiple ways of escaping this, so instead, he was given a harsher punishment, the ultimate punishment. I also find it kind of funny how in 2016, a Russian man whose name I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, but will put on screen, really did attempt to escape prison by successfully sliding through the food slot, and was only caught on the surveillance footage. But what did you think of this episode? Was it better than Squeeze? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Now you're gonna try and get Mulder and Scully to show up on my doorstep! I'm not an, I'm not an alien! Uh...